Hello, and welcome to Riverside Technology, Inc.'s presentation on Colorado's Flood Decision Support System. Amy Vulcans, a Senior Water Resources Engineer for Riverside, will be presenting this information. And now, here's Amy. Thanks, Mary Jo. Hi, I'm Amy Vulcans. In March 2012, I attended the AWRA Water Resources and Geographic Information Systems Conference. At the conference, I presented on Colorado's Flood Decision Support System, a system that we developed and is used by the state of Colorado to manage flood data and to assess flood hazards across the state. The state of Colorado wanted a web-based portal for flood data that could be accessed anywhere at any time. The state uses the system to monitor flood risks during the flood season and to administer flood programs year-round. The Flood Decision Support System brings together data from federal, state, and local agencies into one application for easy access. It includes spatial data on maps, as well as links to non-spatial data, which includes documents, such as the state's annual flood reports, and websites, such as links to local emergency management offices. Most of the information in the Flood Decision Support System is publicly available, although some sensitive information is restricted. This is what the main map looks like. The application was developed using ArcGIS server technology. The spatial data layers are organized into groups based on the data type. For example, the real-time data group includes precipitation outlooks, snowpack conditions, and other weather-related information that is updated every 15 minutes, ensuring that users are accessing the most current data. One of the most common types of flooding that occurs in Colorado is caused by snowmelt runoff. This was certainly the case in 2011, when much of the state had record high snowpacks. When temperatures warmed up, causing the snow to melt, rivers on both sides of the Continental Divide saw high flows. The Flood Decision Support System communicated these flood risks to users by showing alerts where stream flows were above flood stage. Also, county-level flood watches and warnings are shown on the map to communicate risk for the day. In Colorado, we also experience flash floods, particularly in burn areas after wildfires occur. In 2011, we were particularly concerned about the potential for flash flooding in the Four Mile Canyon burn area above Boulder. Wildfires burn vegetation that used to act as a sponge to collect rainfall in addition to producing lots of burned logs and other debris. The high temperatures from the fires also make soils hydrophobic. All of this means that once a wildfire has occurred in an area, it doesn't take much rain to produce a flash flood. Given all of the data in the system, there are lots of other things you can do with Colorado's Flood Decision Support System. For example, the system shows locations of historical floods, along with pictures of the flood and information about what caused it, the associated damages, and how many deaths occurred. You can find critical facilities like hospitals and water treatment facilities that are located in the floodplain and may be at risk during high water events. These are just a few examples of what the system can do. Thanks for your interest in Colorado's Flood Decision Support System. You can access the public website at the web address shown on this page. Or, if you're interested in developing a similar system to centralize your data and improve your communication with stakeholders, please contact Mary Jo for more information.